recognize that for us to be successful, and obviously we spent a lot of time thinking about this, we have got to locate outstanding stock pickers. That is our assignment. And at least once a week, I run into Mark's office on fire about somebody that we just located. And when the investment committee gets wrapped up in it, we do our investigation. Better to get them young, better to get them early. Mr. Brian Barish, CEO and president of Cambiar Investors. Thank you. Thank you to, uh, to David and, and to Waddell and Associates, and, and thank you for taking some time to, to, to come out this evening. This is a really cool arena to be, to be in. Um, so what I, I wanted to do is uh, tell you a little bit about my, my strategy that we, we run, a little bit about my company, uh, but most importantly, uh, to, to talk about stock picking and just show you what it is that I do. And, and hopefully that's interesting and, and, and generates some questions. Um, so uh, I run a company in Denver called Cambiar Investors, which you, you may have never heard of uh, before because we don't really advertise uh, very much, but we, we've been around for 40 years. Uh, we run uh, just about $10 billion currently, and we run it all using the same investment discipline, which is something we call relative value. So there's different stripes of value management. There's relative value, there's classic value, there's deep value, there's quantitative definitions of value. But we're all trying to do basically the same thing, which is to buy business assets that are undervalued in, in, in some way. Um, what I think is distinctive about us is we, 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 we do this across the capitalization spectrum. We have a domestic large cap uh, fund, we have a domestic small cap strategy, we have a, an international strategy. Uh, we have some global strategies, including aggressive value, where we mix and match uh, ideas from the, the, the purely domestic or international strategies. And, and that's basically all we do. We are not a supermarket. We're not some behemoth that has uh, 77 different mutual funds that we're hawking uh, all, over, all over the world. We're just trying to do a few things and, and, and do them well. Um, I will tell you, as a portfolio manager and as a stock picker, there's, it's a little like a lot of sports. You know, there's a few, se several sports where there's not one way to do it right, there's a few ways to do it right, but there aren't like a hundred ways to do it right, if, if you could relate to that. Uh, the way to do it right is you, 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 you have focus, you have concentration in, in your portfolios. You only own a few stocks, you have a few eggs in the basket, you watch it closely, and, 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 and that ultimately is characteristic of almost all uh, investment managers, whether they're vanilla equity managers like myself or, or hedge fund managers that have superior long-term uh, track records. Um, in all of our other strategies, save aggressive value, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the business of, of trying to, to, to make money ultimately, and, and that means that we have to appeal to a reasonably broad audience. And a reasonably broad audience wants us to, uh, well, to, to behave. Uh, basically, to uh, not take outsized risks in terms of individual positions, not to really go too crazy in terms of industry concentration, and very importantly, to occupy particular places in their asset allocation. We compete for slices of an asset allocation pie. David just showed you his uh, asset allocation pie. That's, that's basically how this industry works, and our job is ultimately to be predictable. Uh, a number of years ago, I, I decided, what, what the heck? Uh, why not create a fund where these rules are conveniently waived? And I can, as the song goes, I can do it my way. My way is, I, I am a stock picker. I'm very confident in my abilities. And if you've ever played poker and you've got a good hand and you know it, the way you make a lot of money is you bet hard. And you make the p table pay you to get lucky. And that's the, basically the way the aggressive value fund is run. Uh, where I'm not buying highly speculative stocks, they're value stocks, they have a lot of valuation support, they have a lot of upside potential if certain fundamental factors that I think are gonna go my way, in fact, do go our way. Uh, and I don't always get it right, but hopefully law of averages, uh, you, you have a favorable uh, batting average. So what, what can we do with the aggressive value strategy? Well. It's unconstrained. I can buy really big positions, and I do. Um, secondly, I can use more tools than a typical mutual fund can use. Normally, you just buy stocks, and you sit there, and you hold it, and you hope it goes up, and that's pretty much what you do. 
But we can, we can go a little further. We can use some hedge fund tricks. We can go use, use uh, asset swaps. We can use derivatives. We can use uh, other uh, interesting tools that if I'm right about something, I can hopefully amplify uh, the position. Um, it is a collection of higher conviction ideas from my other strategies. It is not beholden to any particular market. We can go international if we like. We can go small if we like. We can go large if we like in terms of, of, of the uh, uh, capitalization of the stocks in question. The goal is superior long-term returns versus a, a, a you know, reasonable benchmark, whether that's S&P 500 or the MSCI ACWI or uh, whatever your favorite index is. That's the goal. Having done this for a long time, and my, my family's been in the investing business, I've been around this stuff since I can, as long as I can remember. Basically, a good active manager, if the markets are gonna give you eight or so percent long term, a good active manager might give you nine or 10. Uh, I can't put this in the literature. My goal is to do 15 or 20. That's not you know, lumpy over time, but that's, that's, that's my goal if I use all these tools and, and, and I use them uh, well. So uh, let me tell you what my discipline is to be a little, a little more uh, concise. Relative value basically means we're trying to buy good companies at good prices. It's not a real tough concept. They're companies we like. We like the management. We like the products that they make. We like the end markets that they serve. But for some reason or other, they've become disconnected from what we think is a fair valuation. And where the relative part comes in is we can quantify it. We look at long-term valuation ranges, we look at peers, and we can see what this company should trade for if, in fact, the market decides to, to love it again. And that doesn't mean that every stock we buy is gonna go up, but we have a pretty good idea of what the valuation gap is and what things are gonna look like if the company in question uh, uh, closes to uh, a better value. This is a complicated slide, but in the aggressive fund, I, I, I try to dial it up a notch. I, I want to find stuff that, if it goes up, it, it, it could be really impactful. Um, so I look for some very uh, deeply disconnected from, from fair value stocks. Um, I try to, to look for stocks where there's a very distinctive company story. It's not a me too type of story in the market. Um, not not a high priority, but I, I like to look for what I call convergence patterns, where you have a, uh, an uptrend and a downtrend, and they're kind of converging on each other. And when they converge, there's usually going to be a breakout. And if I'm on the right side of that, it can be uh, pretty powerful. Um, so, so last, I'll just talk about risk. Risk is uh, a four-letter word in our, our business. Risk means different things to different people. For a lot of investment managers, risk means volatility. Volatility relative to a benchmark, vol volatility relative to some set of expected returns. I, I hate that, that definition. It, you know, it, things are going to wiggle around. We, we, we all, all know that. I want to take risks that I think I can analyze. So this would be the earnings outlook for a company, how certain regulatory or legal factors might play into things. Uh, maybe there's some economic uh, read in terms of, of how uh, the macro economy is going to flow into the company's numbers. Those are all risks I'm willing to take. What I'm not willing to take are risks that cause the duration of my investment to shorten. Equities are the ultimate duration instrument. They have infinite duration, essentially. But when the balance sheet becomes a risk factor because a company's got a lot of debt, you know, the creditors do come first, the equity holders are last in line, then uh, you got to satisfy those creditors first. If my, the financial statements are something I can't figure out, and maybe other people can't figure that out either, that too can cause, uh, well, bad things to happen and, and, and for the duration of my holding to be curtailed in some way. So I don't want to take those, those kinds of risks.